So before I get started on painting this, to make sure that I've protected the sides of the canvas, I'm just going to go ahead and, uh, and tape it. And I do this because it's much, much easier than trying to uh, add additional paint once, uh, once the piece is finished and risking splashing the base colour all over uh, the details of the print. So uh, just use standard uh, masking tape for this and um, obviously the trick is just to make sure that it's all dry. And uh, I do this for uh, the wood panels as well. This one here is going to be a dog portrait uh, for a friend who's been waiting for a really, really long time actually. Um, and I'm hoping that I will be able to finish this, uh, well, this week. So I'm going to show you some of the progress on as I go. Here's some of the stenciling work that I do. And I actually stencil the first couple of layers or uh, cut the first couple of layers. And then um, as I'm spraying while the paint's drying, I'll cut uh, the other layers. So I'll just keep my mask on while I'm in the room. Laying down the first layer here. And the trick is to get them absolutely straight and flush. Get any lint off. And test the nozzle before going ahead. I press down the sides to make sure that the paint doesn't get underneath. I mean, it sometimes does just because the pressure of the uh, of the can sprays up the paper. But uh, the paper that I'm using here is a 50 pound paper. Uh, and the advantage of that is that as it gets wet with the paint, it will actually curl away from the canvas to give a nice sharp edge. The downside is you can't really use it again. Once you've used it one go, uh, it doesn't really make for another good, it doesn't make for another painting, like you can't use it for a second set. So that's the first layer done. And you can see the outline of our subject there. Can you tell what it is yet? <laughs> okay, so second layer's down, going with a different gray, one that's slightly darker. And here I'm just checking to make sure that it is in fact a decent contrast. Um, sometimes you don't know until you've got it down and it's better to check at this point. Number three, you can see the stencils are starting to get a bit more detailed now. It's always very nerve wracking at this point. it's worth it because it's so satisfying when you peel the layers away it's like my absolute favorite bit I think so sort of doing the reveal and seeing it come together sometimes when I'm working on a piece uh, the portrait or the person's face doesn't really come to light until I'm you know absolutely on sort of the final or penultimate stencil and I get to just breathe this sigh of relief this is the fourth one going down and this is a light grey so starting to get some contrast into the piece but also wanting to be very careful that these feathery little slices in the paper uh, keep their definition you can see i'm only wearing one glove in this and that's because i've had an absolute nightmare problem trying to get hold of uh, packets of the disposable gloves because obviously they're in high demand um, because of covid here what I'm doing is I'm just adding some blue to the table portion and then uh, mirroring it in the composition just on the right side or I guess the left side of the dog. The only reason I do that is just to try and tie the two elements together. And I have to change nozzles as I'm going through. I use a German blue cap spot nozzle. Uh, it's made for stenciling so it just controls the pressure a little bit. I'm putting this down and this is really really yellow. I'm looking for more of a cream color to go with this because this dog is white now all white or all black dogs can be quite difficult to stencil because they often are photographed and don't end up with a lot of contrast in the photographs but what i'm doing here is just dulling that yellow down a little bit with sort of an ivory colored 
white paint, which will give it a, a cream, a cream sort of uh, colour. There we go. So yeah, you can really see the dug starting to appear now. And obviously, I've cut out the drying time. So during the drying time that you're not seeing on here, I'm cutting stencils. Uh, so this is give you like uh, the fast forward, good stuff reveal without having to wait. Great, that's, I'm really pleased with how this is looking. We're coming towards the end here. I think this is stencil, is this number six? Yeah. Now when I'm doing um, these ones where you can see I'm flipping the paper there, that's because the detail that I'm doing is on the eyes and the nose. Um, the experience that I've had is if you get those bits wrong on people or animals, it just changes them from looking just like a dog to that person's dog or looking, you know, just like a portrait of a woman or a man to actually looking like that specific person. And if you mess up the eyes, you've really got to start from scratch and it's incredibly frustrating. Here we go. There's Zeke. Oh, he's looking great. Now this is the final stencil and you can see here this is the piece that I cut out for that first silhouette of Zeke and on it uh, the detail in the middle is just a few little dots of areas where I um, have already sprayed a colour but I just need to add a little bit of detail. So in this case it'll be around the mouth and uh, the eyes I think in particular and then there is a little bit on the lower paw as well. Uh, because he's a super fluffy dog so uh, there's lots of you know good little shadows uh, and you always want to put some detail on the eyes so that you know it looks realistic and it looks like you know he's got a bit of a twinkle i'm holding my breath big time with this yellow <laughs> Okay, now I have actually had a little bit of uh, spray blast which has come out off the painting onto the original colour so what I'm doing is just touching up the edges where uh, I've maybe got a bit of grey or some of that cream colour which has just spilled over onto the original colour and that's just a quick touch up and then you see uh, Zeke's line looks nice and sharp and uh, what I always do is walk away from a painting once it's done and um, sleep on it and then go back the next day to look at it because very often when it's first finished I'm not entirely happy with it but I'm actually really pleased with this one. and we'll get it signed and varnished and then it will be ready to go to Michelle and to its new home and hopefully I'll get to deliver it and see Zeke and introduce Zeke to his, uh, his likeness, see what he reckons. All right, so I've got Zeke's painting over here and he's just trying on to being varnished. So in the meantime, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make some small lino printed cards. I've just cut this. I drew it out first on a piece of paper like this, just a really simple picture of an owl, and cut it using one of the uh, speedball tools, which you can get at any art store. And I'm going to go ahead and print this onto some cards that I bought at the art store today. So super simple. I've gone ahead and bought these uh, little notelet cards that come with an envelope and I've made a guide here on the desk so you can see the tape uh, is the same space as the card and then I lay the little block print uh, in it with the ink on it so that I can lay it down and have an, a guide so I can try and get it central uh, on the face of the card because otherwise um, there's no way for me to be able to know like whether it will come out squiffy. So what I'm doing here is to make sure that I put the lino block down in the same place every time is just marking where the corners come to within that guide and that just enables me to eyeball it when I'm popping the card down. So that's why I do that. I'm sure there are other methods. I'd love to hear about them. I'm not a professional or a, you know, accomplished 
printer at all. This is just something that I enjoy doing and I think it's really good and really healthy as an artist to be experimenting and doing things that are outside of your comfort zone. So here's the ink. This is Speedball ink again. You give it a roll and you won't be able to hear the sound on here, but it makes kind of like a sticky noise as you're rolling it. Um, so you push the ink away and then sort of drag the, the roller back until you get that nice stickiness. You apply it directly onto the block print and then you're going to lay the, the card. You lay the card onto the print, not the print onto the card. So I'm just straightening it up. Okay, here we go. I've just got to work out which side of the card is going to open. Okay, so I line it up with the guide that's around the outside. Gently layer it into place or lower it into place. <laughs> and then I take this roller, which I never use for paint, and I use that to press the card down onto the block print. And I think this is a really great um, option if you want to do some printing at home. You don't need a lot of equipment. And then peel it off. Okay, so I got a little bit too much ink on my roller there. You can see the lines on the ears have, have filled in. So I'm going to try that again. Okay, so I will re-ink, but with slightly less this time. The lino block. This is an easy carve block, which means it's not like uh, traditional lino flooring where it's really hard to carve. I'll just get another card. Okay, lower again and measure up with the guide. Gently does it and press it down. When I was first doing this, I would make the mistake of pressing too hard and then I would get like dents in the cardboard or the paper that I was printing onto. So now I just try to keep it an even pressure uh, in both directions to make sure that the corners get covered. Yes, that one's come out perfect. Oh, I'm loving it. Nice. Oh, what shall I call it? I think this little, this little uh, owl needs a name. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll throw that up on social media. Completed this year. Let's cross it off. So that's all for this vlog. Thank you for joining me while I painted Zeke's painting. I'm looking forward to delivering it to Michelle and Zeke. And again, Michelle, thank you so much for uh, sticking with me. I know it's been months since you commissioned this, but I'm really, really pleased with the result and I hope you will be too, and Zeke, of course. So that's all I've got for this week. Hopefully next week I'll have some more to tell you. I'm waiting on a couple of things. And um, yeah, we'll catch up again soon. Please like and subscribe and uh, obviously tell all of your thousands of friends to do the same as well. Bye for now.